All right, it's a pleasure to have Stéphane Saboreau today from Paris Est. He will be talking about microscopic scalar curvature and local collapsing. Thank you. And, um, and thank you for, for the invitation. So yes, yeah, so I'll be talking about uh, microscopic scalar curvature and local collapsing. So the, okay, so here's, uh, so I prepare a few things, a few slides. Um, so in all the, the talk, I mean, M would be just like a closed manifold, uh, admitting a hyperbolic metric or, or even like something more general like metric with negative curvature, let's say pinch negative curvature. And, uh, and G, it would be a, another, uh, another metric, a Riemannian metric, okay? So that's just uh, the fact that it admits a hyperbolic metric is just a, a topological condition, basically. Uh, and then we can look at the, we can define uh, the this, this color curvature uh, on, a, on a manifold, on a Riemannian manifold. So it depends on, on X, the, 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 the base point X on, on your manifold. And that describes, yeah, the, the, the infinitesimal volume of, of balls. So when you look at the expansion of the volume of ball, of a ball of radius R, uh, then you get this, this expansion. So, so the first factor here, the first term is just like the, the Euclidean term. And then there's a, another term involving the, the scar curvature. So that's how you, you can define it. And that's, uh, I didn't write it, but that's when R goes to zero, of course. Okay. Uh, and then there's this, this, I don't know if, it, if we stated like that, I think, you know, I, I found that in a, in, a, in a paper by Larry Ruth, uh, that the, the, the Shun conjecture that says that if the, the scar curvature uh, of, of your of your metric is greater than the scalar curvature of the hyperbolic metric, um, then the volume for the initial I mean for yeah for the Riemannian metric is, is greater than the volume of the hyperbolic uh, uh, metric. Okay, so that's um, that's a conjecture. I mean, yeah, by, by Sean, it's not a really he didn't state it like that, but it's you can. Uh, with a little bit of work, you can see it's equivalent to another conjecture is stated. Um, so, all right. Um, so what does that mean? Uh, we can also say, because of we have the way we define the, the scalar curvature, uh, we can sort of state it like that uh, with this kind of uh, condition on the volume of, of ball of small balls. So if the volume of small balls, of balls in, in the Riemannian manifold is less, okay, remember because of the, of the minus sign here, uh, you have to switch the, the inequality there. So if the, if the volume um, of the balls of radius R you know, manifold is less than the volume of the balls in the hyperbolic space, then you, know, you expect the, the volume of the manifold to be uh, larger than the, the one of the hyperbolic metric. And that's true in, in, when, uh, in dimension two, that's Gauss Bonnet. Uh, in dimension three, it also, it's also true, it follows from Perelman's work, and you can find that in Kleiner and Lott. Um, and it's also true if, if the metric here, G is close to the hyperbolic manifold, uh, to a hyperbolic metric, which is uh, besson courto -Gallo. And I also, also should say it's also true if you replace the, the scalar curvature with the, the Ricci curvature. Okay. And that's again uh, due to a Besson Cotois Gallo. And uh, so here, what, what you can, if you sort of reverse, it's not exactly equivalent. What I said is not exactly true, but if you sort of reverse the, the, the implication there, uh, this implication, uh, which you can, you can write it like that. Okay, so the, you expect that if the volume of G is small, then you can find uh, a, a ball of larger volume, meaning greater than the volume of the ball in the, in the hyperbolic manifold. Okay, and that's for R small enough. Okay. All right, so that's a kind of question uh, I'm interested in. Um, 
And uh, so, so yeah, so as I said, the idea is, again, if the volume of your manifold is small, you should be able to find uh, a ball of large volume in your, in your manifold. Okay, which is kind of counterintuitive, maybe first. Um, and so that's why we, we're going to define uh, the. We can define the, this quantity here, which is the maximum volume of a ball of radius r. I mean, it it makes sense actually to to look in the in the universal cover rather than in the manifold itself. Uh, so here we we're just taking the the maximal volume of of a ball in the universal cover of um, of M, okay, ball of radius R, and uh, and I was talking about the besson courtois galois theorem. Uh, so the the result is is about the the minimal volume entropy that they computed. So the the entropy is actually uh, a Riemannian invariant that you can define, you, you look in the universal cover of your manifold and you, you look at the exponential growth rate of the volume of balls in this, this manifold. And you see that um, if, if the volume, the result says that if the volume uh, of G is less than the hyperbolic, then the, the entropy should be greater than uh, the, the hyperbolic, uh, the entropy of the hyperbolic matrix. So in other words, uh, you can find a ball of large radius R. I mean, I mean they are more like, yeah, there's an R zero. And I should say, depending on, that's the, sort of the problem, depending on G such that uh, the volume such that you have this inequality. So the, you, you can find in the universal cover a ball of radius r for every r greater or equal to r zero, whose volume is greater than the one in the hyperbolic space. Okay. And yeah, so that's the the thing is this r zero is not uniform. It depends on the on the metric. Um, all right, and and good as a Kind of a, a similar result. Uh, so it proved that uh, if the volume that is let's say smaller than a than the why well, small let's say small like that, it's not exactly the the the, the volume of the the hyperbolic matrix that would be too strong, uh, but um, so it proved this. I mean, under this condition, it proved that in the universal cover, you can find a ball of radius one. Okay, so that's what we're gonna write here. You can find a ball of radius one in the universal cover such that uh, the volume of this ball is greater than the volume of um, the, the, the unit ball in the, in the uh, hyperbolic space. So the so the difference here is just this is true for 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 um, for r large enough, and here you have a similar inequality, but for r equals one. Okay. And so the the, the question he, he asked is, uh, well, do you can you? Uh, so under the same condition, is it true that you have this inequality there, like that? You know, like as in a, in a, a besson courtois galois theorem, uh, but like for every r greater or equal to to one. Okay, and you can be even more optimistic and uh, and ask something like that. You know, and, and so under this condition, can you find so that's a question, question mark? Uh, do, do you have this inequality there for every r greater than uh, greater than zero? Okay. Um, so yeah, so I'd be interested in in this in this problem there. 
Uh, maybe I should say that it's true when n is two, and that's due to Steve Karam, uh, who put that for for for, for surfaces. Um, all right. So the the result I want to present is is the following. It's not exactly the. I mean, it doesn't quite answer Goose's question, but it says that if I mean, actually, it does if the, the volume is, is smaller, is, is, is small enough. If the volume of your manifold is smaller than this quantity there, um, then you can, well, yeah, then you, you can find for every R greater or equal to one, you can find in the universal cover of M a ball of large, uh, of large volume, okay? So the, the difference again is is here, maybe I should say here he had this uh, uh, this uh, I mean this condition, you know, we had like the, the, the volume of the hyperbolic manifold, not in our case, okay. But then, okay, not in our case. But then what what you gain is that uh, here you, you kind of, you get a, a uniform R for which you have this inequality there, okay? Before we had it like for, when, for, for R zero, for, for R large enough and for R equals one. And now um, we have it for every R greater or equal to, to one. That's, the, that's sort of the, 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 main, uh, the main difference, okay? Uh, and maybe I should say that, yeah, also the, the strategy of the proof is, uh, is, is different from, uh, from Gromov and Besson, Coutois, Galo, and even uh, Guth, uh, who, who prove like sort of a, a similar result. Here, I'm referring to, to uh, an earlier estimate on the, on the volume entropy. Then later on, Besson, Courtois, and Gallo, they, 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 they proved their, their sharp estimate that I just um, mentioned. And uh, so here you use like a simple, simplicial volume techniques. Uh, there they, they use the technique with the, with the bar center map. Uh, and then Larry Guth for the, the previous theorem, he proved it. Uh, Using uh, some kind of coverings and uh, and nerve uh, uh, technique, so and here it's it's more it's based on it's sort of in some ways it's a little bit similar to well not really well I'll talk maybe more about that but it's so it's based on some co local collapsing techniques. Um, okay. So maybe what, what I can do here is sort of, if the, the, the problem is, is clear, is maybe uh, sort of present a uh, first attempt to, to prove these, these results that uh, actually that fails, but uh, just to, to show you where the, the difficulties are, um, okay. So again, all right, okay, so here's is, is an approach. Okay. So the idea is to look for the new manifold, to look for two loops based at the same point. Okay, so this point here, it's, it's x zero, and you want to look for two loops, gamma one, oops, gamma one, and gamma two uh, satisfying two conditions. Uh, so the first condition is that the length of these loops should be controlled by the volume of, of the manifold, okay? And since our volume is, is small, then we get this this kind of uh, 
uh, of band. You know, remember, this is less or equal to uh, the the volume is is less or, or equal to delta n. Okay. Uh, so that's the first condition on the on the length on on the on the, sort of the geometry, and you also want those loops to generate a subgroup of algebraic entropy. Uh, so remember before I I defined I defined the the entropy of a of a manifold, the volume entropy of a manifold of the exponential growth rate of the volume of balls in the universal cover. Okay. Uh, here, what you can do is you take, um, you have your group and you take um, the generating set and you just look at the K graph and just look at the exponential growth rate of the volume of, the, of your balls in this graph. Okay, as previously, and you you call that the the entropy of your group with respect to the to the word metric uh, generated by your by the set S. Okay, and of course it depends on the on your generating set, uh, but then you take the infimum over all generating sets, and that's what we you call that's how you define the uh, the algebraic entropy. Okay, and so therefore, the algebraic entropy is just the infimum over all those generating sets uh, of the, the the entropies here uh, defined like that over all those generating sets. Okay. All right. Um, and and then what you can when what you want to do is all right. So here's a picture. Uh, we have our two set. We have our two loops, and so we we have our, our base point x zero. We take a lift in the in the universal cover. That's the universal cover, uh, and then we you take just the the action of uh, your of this subgroup gamma. Okay, so here you have gamma one. You know you get a you get a point there just to, so here's gamma two you get another point and, and so on and so forth okay so you you just have here those points just represent the the orbit of or best point x zero tilde under the the subgroup generated generated by uh gamma one and, and gamma two right and so then uh what you can show it's not difficult is that this this entropy generated by those two sets you know by those two elements uh is is bounded by the volume entropy of your manifold times the maximum of the length of gamma one and gamma two all right uh, that's just because, well, basically another way to define the volume entropy is, is to count, I mean, in the universal cover, you're going to look at balls of, of large radius, and you're going to count like that the, the points of the orbit in those balls, and you take the exponential growth rate of the number of those balls, when the radius of the ball goes to infinity, and that gives you the, the the volume entropy the same way. All right. So there's there's a relation between uh, those two, uh, and of course that involves the the length here of your um, of your two elements. Okay. And um, then, well, because because of this this inequality there, uh, this is should be just. This should be just just like that, all right. So that's precisely it says. I mean, that, that says exactly that the, the minimal volume entropy of your 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 manifold 
is is bounded away from from zero. Actually, it's, it's bounded by by h, right? So that's as I said, yeah. That that gives that gives you an exponential lower bound on the volume of balls, but of large radius. Okay. So as I said, it's just the, you get a you can show like that that the the minimal volume entropy of your manifold is is uh, is non-zero, um, and uh, I mean that was known. Uh, you know, let's say Gromov proved it. You know, using the the, the notion of volume entropy and based on Kotuagalo uh, using the the, the Barry Center map, they, they proved that. And I proposed an alternative proof you know, based on this using you know filling techniques. So it's true that you can you can always find uh, two loops. Uh, satisfying those those condition on your on your manifold, but as I said, it, it works only for um, for balls of large radius. Okay. Um, oh, Stefan, can you, yes. Yeah, could you just say a word about where the second loop that's independent of the first one comes from? I mean, that's that's you know bounded by volume to the one over n. You know, like I'm thinking about, say, a flat torus. I don't see a second loop, right? I mean, it could just be sure, shrunk sure. in one direction and not in the other two. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you, you're right. I and mean, here, the, the topological condition, there's a topological condition on M. It should be, uh, it should admit a metric of negative curvature. Uh -huh. So you, yeah, I mean, there's a topological condition. M, and uh, maybe you, you, you missed that, that at the beginning, but the, the manifolds are considered just carry a metric, a hyperbolic metric. Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. you know, so you, you have this one, sure. Yeah, and is there a, two, a 20 second explanation about where the second one comes from? Sure, um, <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, so it's, it's, it's based on the, okay, so it's, it's based on the, on, the, on the filling techniques. So, mm -hmm. um, hmm. So when you use it, the, the filling techniques, at some point, what you want to do is, um, maybe, well, let's see a second. Uh, right. At, uh, at some point, you know, you, 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 on, on your manifold, uh, you, 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 you're gonna have like some, some points, some triangles that you want to fill. Uh, I mean, uh, that you want to, right. Uh, let's see. Uh, you want to okay. So basically, in the filling techniques, what you, what you have, you you sort of fill your your your, your manifold, and you want sort of to 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 construct a retraction, uh, so you get a contradiction. And the way you do it, you do it like a, a skeleton by skeleton. And so what you do is, uh, so it's easy. I mean, it's easy. yeah, it's easy if you're uh, if you do it on skeleton, so you're going to look at the one skeleton, mm -hmm. and if it if this is non contractible, if it's contractible, then you, you can you can fill it, and then you you, you can con continue. But here, so that's how you Gromov prove this systolic inequality. But here you can get right. stuck just from from the beginning, okay? But the idea is because you know you could this loop could be could be hanging there, okay? Right. But uh, the idea <laughs> there is, all right, there's one, okay, there's this loop here that's non-contractible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's no way you, you, you can contract it uh, into your, your manifold. But what you can do is, is ju just add a disk mm -hmm. there, okay? But, and then, okay, but then, so it's fine. But remember what you, what you have then, it's, then you have to, to move to the to the next one. Right. I mean to, to the next skeleton. So so you, you have to feel something like that. And the idea is okay, if because if you have if you now you want to feel this this pyramid there, and one of those disks, one of those loops uh, is contracted through this disk. 
what happened is that all the other loops, they cannot go around there. They have to be, they have to be either contractible or, or they kind of contract along the same disk you added. And so, so at the end, you, you have your, your, your manifold and okay, maybe, maybe you, you won't be able to, to retract everything on the manifold itself. But if you add those disks, then you, you can show that it's fine. You can retract everything on the manifold plus the disks. And that's, that's enough to conclude. Uh -huh. That's my okay. sort of 20 second explanation. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thanks. I'll yeah. try to think about why that didn't work for the for the three dimensional torus. Yeah, and we can we can talk about that. Uh, yeah. After, after oh, but actually, yeah. I see it. But you know. Okay. So okay, never mind. Okay, thank you. Okay. No. Uh, all right. Okay. So that, as I said, that's um, that works, but only for that gives you a something, but only for balls of, of large radius, okay? And, and certainly not for, you know, balls of uniform radius. Uh, but here's what we, what we want to do. So really what we need there, it's like we need, when you look at the orbit of this point, uh, I mean, that doesn't carry any volume, okay? Remember, we're interested in the volume of those balls. And that's you know why here we we don't get anything. So what we want, what we'd like is to have some volume here around this point, and and sort of distribute this this volume in the you know in a manifold, in the, in, the, in the universal cover of of the of the manifold. Uh, so if we have some volume here, then we can we can distribute it, uh, you know, with the with the with the action. Oops. With the action of you know of, of gamma one and, and, and gamma two, uh, and there from there what we can do is just uh, is just uh, and then we can estimate uh, the the volume in this in this ball you know because we we can count the the the, the, the number of, of points in the orbit plus you know times. Uh, Times the the, the 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 volume you 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 have uh, around the, this point, okay, um, and that's there are so there's a, the first issue would be all right. I mean, what we know is that uh, is, I mean the problem is that the, the volume could be could be what I said yeah diffused through the through the manifold without being concentrated around a point. You know why would we? I mean, how do we know that there's volume around at least one point? Okay, uh, and that's precisely actually what Goose's theorem is, is about. Is that it says that somewhere on your manifold there's a ball of of radius one, say that has some that carries some some volume. Okay, by carry some volume, I mean you know it's not it's, it's just uh, well. Where is it in this result? It's it's um, it's uh, th this ball of volume one. It has has like some you know uniformly bounded volume. Let's say. Oops. So yeah, uh, but okay. So all right, we know that there is a there's somewhere a ball of. Of, uh, of say of radius one of of large volume okay this bounded the volume is bounded away from zero uh, but what we also need to do is is we you also need this ball to be uh, to be sort of centered what is not too far from from the point where you could find those two loops uh with with vol uh, with length controlled by um the volume of the of the manifold okay 
So, and um, yeah, so we need this ball to be to be center around around your this base point. Okay, you need some volume here in order to distribute it in the universal cover. And so the the filling techniques are. Uh, well, actually, I, yeah, I just talked about uh, that they don't work. I mean, you, you can find those two loops, but you know they they, they they don't tell you where the volume is. And that's um, that's the, the 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 main issue here in this uh, um, in this problem. okay? So uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, maybe I, I don't know if I can if I can continue or if I stop here or continue later. Maybe maybe, maybe if, you, if you have a question, I'd, yeah, maybe, maybe I can uh, pause here for a second and uh, ask if you, have, if you have questions. Otherwise, I don't know. I can continue with because you you you, you tell me to, to keep it short. <laughs> That's but I can, I can I can continue and, and talk a little bit more about uh, the, the the techniques based on on local collapsing. Oh, I, I would say please continue. You know, it's uh, we okay. ask you to keep it short so uh, folks like Shmuel can ask good questions in the, sure. in the middle. So yeah. Okay. Okay. It's good. Um. All right. So here's the here's the res well. Let me more, be more precise with a. Uh, uh, with goose results. So what he what he proved is that uh, well, so basically if you have a manifold of small volume, then your manifold should look like an n minus one polyhedron. Okay, that's that's a manifold of of, of dimension n. Uh, so it's it's actually more precise than that. If the if the volume you, you fix R. And if the volume of, of those balls are, is small, then you can find a map uh, from M to an N minus one skeleton uh, with fibers of diameter bounded by, by your R, okay? So yeah, so if all those balls, all, all your balls are small then, it should look like an n minus one polyhedron, and then this actually this result was generalized by uh, Lyukumovich, uh, Lishak, Nebitovsky, Rotman, uh, and also uh, by Papazoglu and uh, and, and Nebitovsky. Uh, here the, the, the yeah here the the, the methods are, are different. Okay, so but. The the issue here is that it doesn't, and for me that it doesn't distinguish thick pot where the volume is uh, from thin pots, you know, without volume. So so if your manifold uh, looks like that, okay, so in its self small volume, uh, then okay, you, from Goose theorem, what you can see is that it's it's going to be close to a n minus one polyhedron, but you know it doesn't distinguish those thin parts there from oops from those thick parts where where the, where the volume here. You know here you get the, the same bound, you get the same bound here on the on the diameter of the of the fibers. While you you what you want is uh, is to to have like a better control here on those fibers, okay. And that's the the first thing uh, I I do in the proof of that uh, what I, I introduce this definition um, and um, let's say okay you, you take you have a say a compact polyhedral length space uh, and you take any function rho and you say that rho you define is just by definition you say that rho x rho collapses if you can find a map uh, to an n minus one polyhedron whose fibers are 
ensembles of radius row of x. Uh, wait, something's missing. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. So, so those ball, those, those fibers on your on your manifold. Oops. Those fibers, they should be slide some balls of reduce um, of reduce row of x. And uh, and from there you can just you know sort of adapt uh, Papazulud or Nabokovsky's proof, and uh, uh, you, you see that you can show that if x doesn't row collapse then you can find a ball of reduce, uh, you can find a ball of reduce R uh, with, a, with a significant volume. And, uh, and the radius here is, uh, is controlled with, the, with R0, okay? And for instance, if you take rho to be R to be constant, you, you just recover Goose theorem. But there, you, what you can do is, is, is what you can do is, is play with, a, with this function rho and uh, so that you take into account the, the geometry of, your, of, of the manifold, right? Um, and then you have to, yeah, so you, you have to play with the with a, with a, with a function rho. Uh, and the way how you define rho and, and uh, maybe I'll yeah just move just just to that is is just uh, is just uh, is just basically what I call Margulis function. So the way you define the the rho that's going to be the the rho pretty much uh, is that okay. You're gonna look at you're gonna look at those subgroups, okay, generated by so you have x and you take mu and you look at all the loops of length at most mu and they they generate a subgroup in homotopy and that's uh, how you that's how I denote it and this subgroup if mu is small, this subgroup should, well, if mu is say less than the system or something like that, uh, then this, this subgroup is trivial. Um, and, uh, and when mu gets bigger, the subgroup gets more complicated. But at the beginning, it could still be, okay, maybe it's non-trivial, but it could still be sort of simple, simple in the, in the sense that uh, it could be of sub exponential growth or it could be of it could be virtually nilpotent okay and then and then you know later you know for for large value of mu then it's going to be something more more, more complicated okay because but you know and then the cutoff is is what i call margulis function so on the torus well it's always infinity uh and um, but you know if m is is hyperbolic, then it's 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 finite, and um, and so what what we can see is that uh, if a, if a manifold has non-zero simplicial volume, say like a, if it's a hyperbolic manifold, then uh, it doesn't mu over two it doesn't mu over two collapse. So what you want to do is is then uh, play with a uh, with this result uh, and with this, this function, and um, and from there, be able to find to find points to find a ball uh, to find a ball where you have two loops. Like that, at least two loops. Actually, it's yeah, two loops uh, of uh, who, who generated um, well generating. So what you want is those two loops to generate 
a subgroup of uh, of of algebraic entropy, which is bounded from below by some constant. Okay, so so the and then from there, uh, from this ball, and with these two loops, you you're gonna be able just to distribute the volume as before in the in the in the universal cover. And for that, I need a a, a quantitative tits uh, yeah, a quantitative tits estimate. I mean, a quantitative tits alternative. Um, to to find, I mean, to, to get a, a lower bound on the um, algebraic entropy of those two loops. I, mean, I can continue, but uh, again, you know, I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, I can be more precise, but uh, if you have questions, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I mean, because okay, I, I, yeah, okay. sure, yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, I don't know if this is a question that could be answered easily, but I mean, it seems that your, you know, the function rho that you're using is, you know, does it, it's anything that's sub exponential, right? So that there's, you know, there's no room for a quant. It doesn't look like there's room for a quantitative constant for what the base of an exponential is, and it looks to be like ultimately that's what you need if you want to be getting, you know, this transport of, of volume. Right. Uh, yeah, exactly. And that's where you need some kind of tits alternative that says uh, either. So you're going to say that, yeah. Go ahead. E Sorry. E e either, either it's your, your subgroup has sub, sub exponential growth, mm -hmm. or uh, it generates a. Well, it's not quite true. I mean, okay, here's, here's what I, I, I would use. Just to answer your question, that's the the quantitative tits alternative I have in mind, and that's due to a Broyard Gelander uh, and also Besson Cotagallo uh, uh, got some results um, like that. So uh, the thing is, okay, uh, how does it work? Okay, so okay, so there's this constant. It's sort of a universal constant. Um, and so for every generating set, you have either, I mean, either the subgroup generating by this, this set, well, it's not a generating set, it's just, just a set. So either the, the, the subgroup generating by this set of uh, elements as sub-exponential growth, or, uh, and that's, I mean, because the, the Tietz alternative says either it's, it has exponential mm -hmm. growth or it has positive a free subgroup. A, yeah. a free, you can you can find a free subgroup, but the point here here is that you can control how far you find this subgroup. Right, so there's a bound on the index, basically. There's a, exactly, there's a there's a bound on, on on the index, so you don't have to go that far. To... Uh, so by the way, so this is a so. So what generality is it like in, in Tietz that if you have a linear group, there's really a bounded index? Um, uh, three subgroup? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure you, you have, a, I'm not sure you have this uniform bound on the, on the index. The uh -huh. index, I mean, you can find a subgroup, a free subgroup, but you don't know how far you, you have to go. Right, that, that's what I'm usually, right. So what what is the condition that, you know what? There's some missing hypothesis in. Uh, oh, it's he, uh, in, in this in this theorem. In this yeah, he, he again. M M is my hyperbolic manifold. Uh huh. So here it's it's uh it's the oh it, oh so this is a specific fact about when the you know for manifolds of say at least negative curvature or yeah with 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 curvature right or exactly. Maybe. Exactly. I, I I don't remember who, what they. I, I, I forgot ah, what they, okay. they did. But you know, maybe here, maybe maybe what what they proved, maybe they, they proved for a hyperbolic manifold, and based on uh, get, maybe they prove it when it has a negative curvature or something like that. Yeah. But I'm not too sure about that. But uh -huh. so so oh, the, yeah, the but this is part of the is, yeah. It's yeah. 
for those for for the pi one of manifold with negative curvature here Got it. okay then you 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 have that so so as i said yeah again ah, so you have those more questions right but i'm sorry i, I didn't hear so yeah, so yeah, so as I said, yeah, so let me finish. So here you, you can find two elements, not too far, okay? Meaning like uh, with respect to uh, to this uh, word distance generated by S. Um, so, so you can find those two elements which are not too far and that they generate, they generate a, a, a billion free group. So you get this, uh, this sort of bound on, well, I guess let's put it that way. This bound, this uniform lower bound on the, um, on the algebraic entropy of this subgroup gener generated by those two elements, S1 and S2. Oh, well, well, no, it's more like S1 and S2 are in S and you, you get this lower bound just like that. So yeah, so those those are the the various tools uh, I'm Thanks. using, and then you just have to we just have to sort of put everything together uh, in order to uh, to conclude. But yeah, again, I, I'm posing there. <laughs> Yeah. People have any any questions? It might might be a good moment to. Yeah, I have one. Uh, thank you very much for a great talk. So this is not a, a directly related with this talk, but uh, the result you mentioned at the end with uh, Toski and Nikomovich. So lower bound for the global filling radius with Urison. So you mentioned Urison n minus one width. Uh, sorry. The, the, the... Uh, the the sound is not very good. Give me a second. Can you hear me now? It's better. OK. So uh, thanks again for a great talk. Uh, I want to ask you a question about the uh, result you mentioned at the end of this uh, one of the slides. So your result with uh, Nabutovsky and Nikomovich lower bound for the gromov filling radius. Yeah, that's uh, right. here, this one? Yes. So, yeah. okay, so you might be aware that I mean, uh, so this result is very close related with the Vietri slips theory here. So, Facundo and his collaborators gave a, a result like recently about uh, Gromov filling radius of a closed manifold is indeed giving a lower bound for the persistence of the, or uh, the, the that time for the top homology class. And, um, bound, so lower bounding for the global filling radius is very important for this theory. So can you talk, tell us more about the, how uh, n minus one width you mentioned here, but in the next slide? There? Uh, yes, this uh, pi function. This is about the global uh, n minus one, uh, unison n minus one width, right? Yes. So. Yes. So what is the uh, uh, most recent uh, result about the lower bounding, the Gromov filling radius with n minus one width? Uh, 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 so we are trying to measure the size of a manifold in different perspectives. Gromov right. is a very great invariant to understand the size of the manifold. In the, and n minus right. one width is something we can compute in a way. We did right. not yeah. define in Vietri's lips theory yet how we define n minus one width, but in the metric uh, geometry, this is a very well known invariant. Yes. And uh, so, do you can you tell us anything about how uh, can we uh, give a lower bound in terms of n minus one width for uh, for Gramov filling radius? What do you think? 
There was a conjecture. Oh, yeah. You, so wait. So you okay? So I think. I mean, all right. Uh, I think we 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 know that the, the feeling reduced. Uh, forget already. Is um, you have this this inequality, right? And that's precisely so. This and and that what say uh, what Guth proved is that you have something like that. Uh, let's see. So what was known before from Gromov is this inequality there, mm -hmm. uh, this one. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, and the goose proved this inequality. Yeah, I am interested in the, the left side of the inequality. So do, do we do we know anything about the left side? No, not the other one. So lower bound for Gromov feeling reduce. Oh, there. Yes. Uh, well, uh, well, as I said, it's like you have sort of the the the, the system there, for instance. You have, as I said, something. Well, with I just that's what I, what I mentioned right uh, right uh, right here is that you can find you you can well let's see you can find uh, I, I would put it you can find uh, hmm, well you, you you can improve this with with two loops and what you want is that those two loops uh generate uh an, uh let's say uh, a virtually unipotent or no let's say uh, let's, say, let's say let's put it like that. They, 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 they contain a free group and you you, you try to find the minimum on, on the length of those things uh, and that gives you also a lower bound on the filling radius when your manifold carries a metric of negative curvature, for instance. Uh, I don't know what else. Uh, so yeah. Your, your result that. mentions Urison n minus one width. So your result with uh, Nobitowski and uh, Yevgeny uh, Likomovich is somewhat relates this from the left side, n minus one width. Yeah. Because I think M minus one can be well defined in the Vettori Swift's theory too. And then that would give us a very good contribution to the field to understand the life sequence of the top homology class for closed manifold. So okay. N minus one width, it can be used for lower bound. That's my question. For lower bound on, on the filling ridges? Yes. But well, there are, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe but there are, there are examples where those two can be far apart. I see, okay. So do you have some counter examples? Con to um, I mean, by scaling, for example, you can get some counter example ideas. N minus one is not a good estimator for global filling radius. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, in, in general, okay. those, those, those two things can be can be far apart. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, well, actually, I forgot you to mention. <laughs> with 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 Nabitowski and Rotman, actually, we we have a we have a low on 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 the on the on the, on the filling wedges. Uh, in terms of, of sweep outs. So that, that's another low bound. And actually we, we show that the, the, the fitting radius is, is roughly given by, uh, by the sweep out. Yeah. What's that? So, uh, boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what, okay, yeah. What, yeah, so what, well, what, what we want to do, what, what we do is that uh, we have a, a manifold, you have your manifold. Uh, you can, uh, you, all right. You have, a, a, say, a pseudo manifold there. Let's call it, I don't know, N. You have a map of non-zero degree. 
And, and here you have a map into a, an N minus one like that. And so what, what you do is, okay, you, you look at those fibers, you look at those fibers. So, so you get N, you, you sort of slice it. And, and then what you do is those slices, you, you just send them into, I mean, through, through phi in your, in your manifold. And then you, you look at those, at the lens. Now you can measure the length of those fibers in, uh, in uh, the lens, I mean, the image. So what you do is you, you do this, you take the, so the, the pre-made like that. Then you, you take the lens of those images of the, of the fibers. And then you, you, you try to, you, you take a, uh, the, 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 the supremum of that uh over the, the your, your point p you know that's your, your your parameter space and then what you want to do is, is take the infimum over all those things and that's what we proved with a uh nabdovsky rotman that's roughly the, the the filling radius okay so yeah Yeah, Sonki has a question. Please oh, ahead. yeah, great. Excellent. I was waiting to go last because my question is kind of a shot in the dark. You can hear me okay, right? I'm kind of... Yes, yes. You know. Okay, this is a shot in the dark, but I'm going to try anyways, because if I don't ask now... I will, okay, please. my question is... I'm, I'm coming okay. from undergraduate perspective, not knowing, never took the apology course, but I have watched a lot of YouTube videos with insightful visualizations. So I read your abstract five times to prepare this question. Um, but I, I can't do it from memory. So let me, okay, your abstract is this. First, I'm gonna repeat your abstract to make sure I understand, then I'm gonna pose my question. Your abstract says, you introduce some notion of curvature. Yeah. Okay, you um you consider a Riemann mat metric on some closed manifold with a yeah. hyperbolic metric. And, yeah. then, and then you may suppose the curvature is greater greater equal to hyperbolic metric, then you made a conclusion. The conclusion, the volume is bounded away from zero. Okay, that's what you're right. constructing. My yeah. question is, this. instead of hyperbolic, everything the same, instead of hyperbolic metric, replace the opposite of hyperbolic. I don't know what the opposite is. Is it spherical, elliptical, or? Okay, so, well, but if it's spherical, it's, uh... Oh, pause, 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 pause. The question is this, say, say spherical. Okay. Say admitting, I don't know. Say admitting a sphere is, basically my question is the corollary true. So if say, instead of admitting a hyperbolic metric, say it admits a spherical metric. Yes. Then, and then uh, scalar curvature, instead of greater than or equal, so what if, so what if it's less than or equal? Uh, then then, then right. can you conclude something, the volume? Is this? Um, Mm. I'm looking for a short answer. If there's no short answer, never mind. No. Uh, okay. So what you want to, do, well, what you want to do is the the curvature in this. I mean, the the, the, the thing is that if the, the curvature is is large, say greater than one, then the the, the volume of your manifold uh, is going to be small, right? Is that true? Yes. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I mean, you, okay. And then, but uh, uh, well, I mean, you, 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 here you you really have to change it. I mean, the, the, the question because the the yeah. Uh, okay, I, that's I guess no. I mean, I guess. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you can you you can, you can find some interesting questions uh, playing with that in in different notions of. Of curvature and, and, and macroscopic scalar curvature more, more than than uh, than anything else, um, and then you have to find the, the right question. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure there's something to to do, but I have to say I, 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 I didn't look into it. Thank you, and thank you for Hannah for the chat the uh, comment. <laughs> right. So, well, I we did not clap before, but I suggest that we oh, do God, now. And the thank you yeah, very much Chris. for a beautiful talk. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.
Thank you. And I'm going to stop recording now.